So we're going to see uh, a couple slides repeated throughout this. And there, I, our apologies, there is a lot of uh, stuff that we've written down. Um, our hope is that if you don't have access to an OT, you can keep uh, coming back to these and trying to find ways that you can either change the activity or the environment or the aid. So we'll revisit this uh, throughout. Uh, so we're going to talk first, though, um, <clears throat> about how we think about the activity, activity differently. So what does that look like? And this is really important, especially if what you're trying to get back to caused you a lot of pain before. Ideally, doing something new and fun will keep your brain so busy that the pain hopefully wouldn't be as high, hopefully. Uh, but when we're returning to something that was uh, difficult and painful, we really need to really think about how to uh, well, ask us, I guess, a couple of questions. The first one is, can you do it differently? Is there a different way to do that? Can you do it at a different time of day? Can we find a time of day for you where your pain is better or your mood is better? And especially for things like chores, uh, and again, these are activities from last uh, session as well, the, the, the household chores, do you have to do it? Is it something that you have to do? Can you do part of it? Can you have help with it? which leads to, do you have to do it? Uh, I think Linda and I have had many talks to people, do you have to make your bed first thing in the morning? If that's when your pain is high, can you not wait to lunch or can you not just drop that activity altogether uh, or find a different time? So really taking a look at the things that we automatically do and finding different ways that we can do that. And I think our clients always say that if I can focus on what I can do as opposed to what I can't, and getting really creative around the can't, but focusing on what you can, that opens up a lot of options for people that sometimes we miss when we, we look at our own standards. Yeah, exactly. And so then we look at the environment. So how can you change the environment? An example we'll go through today is the computer desk. And again, thinking outside the box is going to be really key for this kind of stuff. And putting equipment at an appropriate height for you is also important. And we go back to the slide from last time, um, which I still love, Linda, with her uh, tags uh, showing where to put things. And, and if it helps you, uh, you know, you, you can really do that for yourself and, and find things and arrange your whole house uh, so the items that you're getting at are helpful. And this is important because if we can stop that pain cycle from starting, then we can help to minimize the pain and keep it at a lower level which is great, but also we can keep you uh, having more function throughout the day. And that's, as Linda mentioned earlier, one of the really important things that we're looking for here. Um, so think, too, about making it easier. Can you change your technique? Can you change your posture? And can you use aids? So we'll come back to this uh, throughout when we finally get into the pictures that we've got coming for you. Linda, I know this is a big thing for you. Do you want to chat about this? Well, I just had a guy say yesterday, um, I've realized how much I've been avoiding because um, I felt like I had already done it all and what good did it do me? Uh, so this changing your expectations and uh, pacing is such an art that uh, it, it takes, I, I honestly think, a few years to figure out what is a rhythm to your day that uh, builds your energy level and gets you doing what you want to do. So it's not something that comes easy. And there's a lot of uh, give and go, making errors, and just keep on trying. And, and starting again. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. And not giving up on yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it's that gentle coaching. Yeah, yeah. And it's really not natural for humans to pace. <laughs> No, it's not something we do well, and it is a skill, and I, I agree, it can take years to find that right balance, and it's trial and error. We can give all the great guidelines that we want, but really often it comes down to trial and error and then persistence. Because I love this slide. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for turtles. <laughs> Slow and steady wins the race. You are the turtle. Be the turtle and know that uh, with the right plan, uh, the right uh, goal, uh, that you will, you'll get to the finish line. I, I often say to people, there's no gold star for getting dressed in under a minute. You should take your time. Make sure you can manage and, and get through these things. That and we, we also say self-care is your new job. So that, that's the thing. So, yeah, yeah, turtle pace. It's the new ideal. Be the turtle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right, so pacing, we've already said it's hard. We've already said it's trial and error, but think about breaking the activity down into small steps. So steps you can um, either do throughout the day or steps you can start with and add on uh, over time. Um, you want to think about doing sports. If we were going to decide to run a marathon, uh, we wouldn't go out tomorrow and just run a marathon. We'd make sure we had good shoes, we'd make sure we do some stretching. We'd probably start out with a walk-run kind of thing. So the idea, when you want to get back to something, don't just go and do it. You want to really think about it and not start up at that 100%. You want to try it at about 50%, um, and that will allow you to be successful, for one, and hopefully the pain uh, won't then uh, go through the roof. 50%, again, is a guideline, and you might want to uh, adjust that as you need. That's the trial and error, but it's a, it's a good starting point. So if you're trying to walk and you want to get more walking, and you know you can do 20 minutes, your body can handle that, your muscles, your uh, lungs, your heart can handle that, but your nervous system can't, meaning that your pain is there, then you want to drop it down to 10 minutes to make sure you can manage that and sort of play with it like that. And back to that sports analogy, usually we do better in groups. So trying to get other people to go walking with or even talk about housework with. I think we don't yeah. talk enough about the social supports. Mm. Mm -hmm. Or we're very independent and we value that highly and maybe we should, including being turtles, be a lot more interdependent. Well, we're also very prideful. What do you mean you can't vacuum? Like, you're yeah. that bad that you can't vacuum? That yeah. Vacuum's yeah. a tough thing. The vibration, the, po the posture, it's terrible. Um, yeah. So, yeah, definitely. I think being kinder to ourselves. Being, let's all be kind turtles. We should have called this the kind turtle talk. Kind turtles. One of our patients said he had dinner and he was in a terrible plain flare. He left the bags of groceries on the kitchen counter and said, hello, guest, why don't you make dinner for me? And it was the best dinner party he ever had. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to find people who are excellent at cooking and just say, hey, I can't do this. You can. Here's the food. <laughs> Go to town. <laughs> That's a great idea. I'll clean my house, you cook dinner. <laughs> Why not? It saves that driving problem. <laughs> <laughs> so now this is a really key one. Of course, if you have chronic pain, your pain levels are high. And pain no longer is a really good indicator of whether you should stop. It used to be. It used to be a great indicator. If you're without chronic pain before chronic pain, if you'd go for a hike up a mountain, you'd feel aching in your calves or thighs or somewhere, and you would rest or stop or turn around. Pain's not telling you that anymore, yet we feel like pain's telling us to stop. So we need better indicators uh, of what's going on. You want to look at your breath. Are you breathing effectively? So you want to make sure, A, you're not holding your breath, or your breath isn't really, really short. Uh, people with chronic pain tend to have a much more shallow uh, breath and are breathe more often. So we want to change that. We want the breath to be much longer and more controlled. Uh, so taking, always taking a look at your breath. And I bet if you check that and check your breath when you're doing things, you'll find you hold your breath a lot. Um, so you really want to pay attention first to the breath. The next indication that whatever you're doing, your body might not be super happy with is is your body relaxed? If your body is tense, and we all hold our tension in different places, it could be the jaw, it could be the shoulders or the hands, um, then you're going to find that uh, you want to pay attention to that. So a real quick scan of your body, relax your shoulders, relax your hands, and make sure you can manage that. And you do want to pay attention to your pain a little bit. Uh, most people who work or are really good at getting stuff done, but the pain hits at the end of the day, they're excellent at distracting themselves from the pain. If you can pay attention to the pain a little bit, uh, that can help you, uh, your body to understand that you're not ignoring the pain. You get that it's there, uh, but you can move forward. And then sticking to your plan. That's really important because if you have a plan specifically like uh, repotting something in the garden and you get three done, but you find you have everything there to do a fourth and a fifth and a sixth, you really need to think about what's my plan. If you stick to your plan, you'll be able to do things uh, on a daily basis as opposed to having a good day, doing too much, and then having multiple bad days after that. So look at your breath, keep your body relaxed, attend to your pain, and stick to your plan. That will help you to move forward uh, with, with your activities. Which means stop rather than complete the task. So that's huge. And I love that. Pain's no longer the signal you should be paying attention to totally. 
It's not. And that's hard. That's really hard because it always has been. But mm-hmm. acute pain is very different from chronic pain. And if you keep, if you treat chronic pain, if you do the things to help your pain, uh, like you would for the acute or the short-term pain, you'll get further and further into chronic pain. So again, it's not a matter of trying harder, because I'm not going to tell people who work all day and struggle all day to try harder. It's a matter of trying things differently uh, in order to progress forward. So that's a real, real big thing. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I think I've talked for a bit too much, Linda. I think you should go now. Um, okay. Well, the, I, this goal setting is that way of pacing and figuring out how to do things differently. So, and this is part of the plan. And again, this is a circle. Uh, there's no, uh, I'm going to do this. That's going to work out. And there's my day. Um, I see a lot of people get really down on themselves when their goals don't work out. And it's really, really a matter of being pleased with the plan, the turtle pace and having persistence, having discipline, and mm-hmm. the, the pride in that. Yeah. It really is the path more than the goal, although the goal yeah. is, is good to get to, but there's so much that you learn on the path there. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's the journey. I love this, too. Uh, <laughs> this is what Sue mentioned, is that so often in our day, uh, we, we spend it coming up with the next crisis. And so when we can do that goal setting and that pacing, uh, we are that woman that's juggling all of those activities. It might not look as smooth as that, but at least we're not spending all of our time with the next crisis. And then we really do spin ourselves into pain flare. Mm-hmm. And this is a really hard thing to do because if there's a fire, uh, I, I don't mean, I mean metaphorically, um, if you've got something that's thrown on your lap, we really do have an option to say, you know what, I, I will attend to that in a minute. Even if someone comes in in a panic, really make sure, again, you've got schedule to your day and a time to sit and, and attend to these things. But uh, you are that important that you need to make sure that you're getting things done that you need to get done for yourself. And it's hard because your adrenaline will go up in fight and flight. So it's it's hard to take that deep breath at that point and go back to the plan. And and here we go with a plan. Uh, this was done by one of our patients. And uh, it looks, some people will say, well, that is absolutely ridiculous. I've got way more to do than that. But this is something that if we could do would be ideal for training our nervous system and progressing our physical system because I think what we're all trying to do is train this nervous system uh, to reduce the pain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And isn't the schedule the first thing you lose often, especially if you're not working? We sort of tend to move and do what we can according to the pain. So really looking at uh, changing that, not being controlled by the pain, but letting your function control what your day looks like instead. Somebody just said to me that bodies love routines and minds don't. So remembering that, keep repeating that to yourself. Bodies love routines. Mm -hmm. And get your mind on board. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So uh, this is something we're not going to go into detail on, but it is the smart way of goal setting. It's one type of goal setting. You may have others that you like. Uh, S meaning specific, M meaning measurable, A is attainable, R is relevant, and T is timely. So you want to look at... When you make a goal, uh, make it very specific with times and dates. I'm going to go for a walk three times a week for starting at five minutes. Are you measuring it? How can you can you actually measure that? Is that something you can actually do? Be realistic about it. Make it relevant. Make it something you want to do. If you hate walking, don't do walking. Pick something that you're motivated for, and make sure that you have a time limit to hit that goal so you can uh, readjust it. But there's lots of stuff on smart um, goal setting if you want. So that's the pacing, that's the idea of what we do. We also want to look at posture. Uh, Our our body is less stressed in a good position with bones and muscles and ligaments if we are in correct posture. Lots of different types, but in standing posture, like you see here, you want that line of gravity to go through your ear, your shoulder, uh, your hips, your knees, and just above your, uh, just in front of your ankles. So that's going to be the ideal type of posture, which is much less stress on your body. However, When you try to get back into good posture, you'll find it can be sore and difficult because your body uh, has been out of it for a while, potentially. So we have sitting, lying, standing, and walking postures. Uh, And so really to think about that. So if you're doing a task uh, like gardening where you're kneeling down, think of the posture of your low back, of your neck, et cetera. And here's some of the things I think I've mentioned most of them uh, that will help with the posture. Any thoughts on posture, Linda? 
No, but that's my husband watching TV. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> So again, we saw this slide last time, but it's just a good example of uh, posture in a lying position because we tend not to think uh, of posture except for in that upright position. So really do focus on uh, the different uh, ways. This is just a review. Uh, think about pacing, creating new ways to do an old activity, uh, goal setting, having a plan to allow yourself. And you know what I love about goal setting is not only it's the moving forward that's great because a lot of people with pain, what happens is the, the tendency is to get further and further behind. So that's nice to move forward, but also if you have a goal, you realize where you've come from. So it's not just how close you are to getting to your goal, but how far you've progressed forward can give you the motivation to keep going. Um, and again, looking at the posture. Alrighty, computers. So, Michael, I'm not sure if you muted, but we do have our second poll question here. Okay, let's um, let's share that. Okay, poll number two is now open. So please um, make your selections and hit submit. And we'll give attendees a minute to uh, get their answers in. I find that 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 posture that uh, in that cartoon with the watching <laughs> that's exactly my computer yeah. posture with my chin <laughs> way too forward. Uh huh. Like this Why do we even kind of want to do that, eh? Like we want to get closer to the screen, uh, you know? Like it makes us, you know, I don't know, more involved or something. We do it brushing our teeth, mirrors. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. So uh -huh. It's really important to remember the chin back. Um, uh huh. In posture, mm -hmm. that's one of my mm -hmm. big problems. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do we have here? I'm going to close the poll down. I'll give, I'll give people another 10 seconds. A few people are still voting. So far, it looks like the most difficult part of using a computer for most people is neck and shoulder pain mm -hmm. with 28%. Of interesting, answers. and interesting because we were just talking about that neck posture. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Mm -hmm. And then the next one was so at 18 uh, percent was sitting for as long as I need to use the computer. Right. So people get tired of being in a sitting position, and then a little bit less, fewer people complained about hands getting numb or painful. Those are the big okay. three, neck and shoulder pain, sitting for as long as I need to use the computer, and then numb, numbing in the hands, numbing or pain in the hands. And I think that, that sitting for as long as you need to is a trick question, Sue, uh, because, <laughs> because I was, we, we were just talking that really, ideally, uh, we should never sit for more than 20 minutes without moving, and yet we have, again, that idea to task completion, and the computer is very devious that way, uh, that the time passes. Mm -hmm. Well, especially because you can just, oh, I'll just do one more. Oh, I'll just check my email. Oh, I'll just do this. Yeah. And really, yeah. sitting is the new disease, right? So we really yeah. need to make sure you're right that we're getting up and doing a lot more. Oh, yeah. Linda, I bet you every other OT out there caught that trick, too. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a smart group listening today. Awesome. <laughs> So again, we're returning to this question. Think about how you can make it easier for you to manage your computer. Can you change your technique? Uh, and that might be time of day that you use it. Uh, can you change your posture? And can you use aids? So again, we're going to revisit this slide when we hit every different thing, just to remind you to think about those different things as you go forward. Um, so this is what I look like when I was making these slides. <laughs> I think I hit all of them. Uh, the top right one was probably the most common for me. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I like the bottom right one, too. I think that's excellent. Um, so just to clarify, these are not good postures, even though we might hit into them. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Just saying the word posture has people sit up better. <laughs> and you know, it does. And you know what else does? Whenever it, When I do my talks to groups, um, so I do it every week, and there's about 20 people. As soon as I do breathing, everyone's like this, and they go, okay, we're going to do breathing. 
<laughs> so if you can focus on your breath, like we talked about, the breath, the muscle relaxation and posture, uh, if you can focus on that, you're going to have a much, much better posture. So interesting that we had that neck and the shoulders, because of course I can turn to the side, I hope I can do this. Of course we're going to get that look like this. What that does is that these muscles here lengthen and these muscles here shorten. And so once we're in that static posture for a while, it gets difficult to get back into that good posture. Um, so this is something you can look over. There are so many things you can change for a computer. Um, uh, Linda, do you want to do, do, do you want to take on this one? I might talk about it. No, no, let's just get to the shots of the different aids because I think this is available anywhere anybody looks. But you want your feet on, you want your 90 degree angles. I think uh, yeah. you want, I think a common problem I see is where people's uh, monitors are. Uh, so you can bring that up so that your eyes are looking at your top third. And also the wrists, I think, is that other one that uh, we might be talking about, getting them in and that neutral down position. That's right. And when, for the people with the neck and the shoulder pain, you do want to have the good posture, but look at where your armrests are, because if your armrests are too high, that raises your shoulders up. And so uh, we want to make sure that your armrests don't actually, your elbows don't rest on the armrests, but they are there for uh, support as needed. But you want to use your I have your a question body. for you, uh, Sue. Mm -hmm. Sue, while we're on this topic, I don't know if my video is now um, enabled or not. Can you see me when I talk? I can, I'm, I'm yep. Wondering, I'm, I'm wondering what you think of these, uh, of kneeling chairs and whether they are <laughs> something People that you... You know what, um, Michael? Are you are you um, you're just a little bit ahead of your time, which I don't think anyone would be surprised about. <laughs> if, you could, if you can hold on a couple slides, <laughs> oh, okay. we will definitely. Yeah, we're gonna hit that because and there are a lot of aids, but um, but yeah, yeah, I I will touch that because I think they can they can be. And again, when we're dealing with people with pain, of course, there's a lot of different reasons why people have pain, but that's yeah, an excellent thing to look at. So here we have Linda looking excellent at a computer. Um, you want to notice the raised, uh, the mouse box, which is pretty cool. Uh, you also want to notice to the right of her computer, you have uh, uh, something that's holding her document. And some people actually put the document in front of them and the monitor to the side, um, so it allows a, a better neck position, but depends on what you, uh, what you can manage. But she's looking pretty good. I like the posture. I like that she's not leaning into the chair. And that raised mouse box, uh, it goes over the number pads so, so, that, so that you bring that elbow a little bit closer into your side. And you can see that nice little forearm rest there, too. It's another mm -hmm. possibility. Yeah. N knowing how technically challenged you are, I kind of laugh when I look at this. <laughs> yeah, I'm always in my head set. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I'm not much better, so I could laugh at me, too. And this, look at this posture. This is excellent. And you notice here we're pointing to the forearm supports. Um, which can, if you have fatigue in your arms and you need to work at the computer, is definitely a uh, helpful thing. Just make sure you've got the good posture going. Um, and again, a vertical mouse, um, which, uh, which I mean, there are just so many aids that they can use. We, I don't, do we have a picture of a keyboard, an ergonomic keyboard? Um, He's got uh, a split keyboard, too. He does. Oh, well, it is split. Oh, good. Yes, excellent. I think there might be another shot of this, or, or we can just say that. This is Niels, our OT, who works in health and wellness for VHA employees. Yeah. So he, yeah. That desk. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I really like, especially if I'm on the computer for long periods of time, is the wireless keyboard and mouse, um, mm -hmm. because then I can adjust my position and uh, use that effectively uh, depending on if I need some uh, some more support or change to change uh, uh, my posture. I, I love this shot, because as soon as Linda left, here's an OT. <laughs> going into the position that they were in. So yes, as OTs, we do no positioning, we do no posture, but um, it doesn't mean uh, we always do it. <laughs> oh, Neil, that's awesome. Now there's yeah. the setup paper. There's the setup that he had, perfect, mm -hmm. perfect. So there again, the split keyboard, the elbow supports, and the vertical mouse. And he also has a document holder uh, in the top right corner, as you can see. Mm -hmm. Good stuff, and there you go, Michael. That is probably the fanciest kneeling chair um, that there is. I'm not sure, Linda, what do you think about the back support? Because most kneeling chairs that I know of don't have that lean back. And I am I think I would prefer someone to be upright from their pelvis up. Um, back. And check that footwear out, too. 
Yeah, I know. That's fantastic. <laughs> Um, and she does have a lot of skookum stuff going on, which is why sort of we post this things, things to look at. The kneeling chairs, um, we're looking at a few things. Uh, I'm getting a lot of uh, people that are coming with pelvic pain uh, recently who are having a really difficult time managing anything. So the kneeling chairs for some, <clears throat> depending on um, where their pain is and why, the kneeling chairs can be very helpful in that. Again, uh, Michael, yours didn't, uh, when I looked at it, when you showed us, which was fantastic, didn't have that back. It can be helpful for you. It perhaps isn't. Uh, again, that's something that's really hard to just say over a, a webinar if that's going to be beneficial to you. Um, but they can really have a, a, a good bit. I, I'd like a little bit more knee support for her. It seems like it's sort of more on one point. So ideally, that knee pad would be a little bit longer to spread the distribution over and ideally she'd be sitting a little bit more upright right for, for my liking. And of course the elbow, um, the armrests are a little too high. I'm thinking a little bit, Linda, hey, this is a, a, a chair that goes into a kneeling chair. What do you think? I th yeah, I think it might be. It's, it's very mm -hmm. bizarre. I've never seen one. Uh, but uh, I, know, I know we're putting out a lot of height adjustable desks for people to go from sitting to standing. So that's yeah. the other thing to change. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. The height of the desk, absolutely. Those are, those are fantastic. Um, the kneeling chairs, by the way, if you're looking for that, uh, that to be helpful, you can get them, I know, at Staples. I'm not a stockholder in Staples. I just know they're there. Um, and there are at other places. And they're about 100-ish, I think, dollars. So if, if you think that might be helpful, just even walk into Staples and give it a try to think, think if that's good. I quite often will use one of those um, exercise balls. I sit on that from time to time. Of course, you know, you want to be very comfortable with that. If you are choosing to use that, your feet wider apart on the floor is going to be more stability. Um, and then there's the high adjustable desks. On a side note, my um, cousin, Arthur Slade, not a plug, but it is, um, <laughs> he's a novelist, and he actually has an office treadmill. So he has his computer station um, set up to a treadmill, and you can buy them. He made his using just a wooden stand. So he actually has written many, many books walking while he types. Um, now you want to walk at a very slow pace, but at the same time we're we're built to be uh, moving. And so if you have your treadmill, if you have a treadmill at a very low level, uh, you can actually do some computer work. It's actually much more comfortable than you think it would be. And the steps that you're taking are so slow, it's almost like just shifting from side to side. So again, no, outside the box thinking. Are people here using wobble stools and finding them effective, sort of similar to the ball, but a little bit more stable, but you know, no longer than 20 minutes. That's the other thing sometimes with these things that you're playing with, maybe even a treadmill, not, not expecting to stay there. Exactly. Yep. You're, you're um, quite right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Put, everyone put one of those in front of your computer. Yeah, no longer than 20 minutes staying there. And also do micro breaks. So if you're at a computer, within that 20 minutes, you want to break. Instead of being like this, you want to do a posture break, shoulders down and back, check your chin is okay, get your arms the reverse of what they were doing, and then go back to work again. It will allow your body to function longer and not get some aching from that static position. All right, moving forward. So I'll leave that for, uh, we, we've talked about these things. This is just a review bit. I think we're going to have to keep clicking forward so we can hit everything. Yeah. So here we have some gardening stuff. Lots of gardeners, a lot of people uh, having difficulty with gardeners. Here's the same slide. Think about how to make it easier. Again, can you change your technique? Can you change your posture? And can you use aids? And actually, maybe at this time, Michael, if we can get people um, replying to all panelists, if you need to talk about that for a second, just we're going to hit leisure in a bit and maybe have some idea of things that they're trying to get back to and hopefully we can uh, brainstorm something on the fly. And these um, are leisure activities in particular? Yeah, I mean, really, uh, whatever. Whatever you're having trouble with, I guess, but we're just going to yeah hit that leisure. And leisure is such a huge category, so many different things people are trying to get back to um, that, that, yeah, ideally we'll keep it to that. Um, okay. Hopefully we've helped them with the other things. But I'm not that picky. Linda, I love you. I hear you say this all the time, the, the user Fitbit. Do you want to chat about you this? Use your feet. 
You should see, and this rake has an ergonomic handle, uh, so rather than uh, going with where the uh, job is calling you, sort of like putting out the fire, think about uh, your body position and your breathing is really, and enjoying the beautiful lumens while you're outside and gardening. And we've got a lot of gardening shots, Sue, so let's fire through them. Sure. I just want to say this is also helpful for um, changing your technique. So she's upright. She's using a feet. So she walks forward, puts the rake down, and then walks backwards. A different way of doing it, but her posture is good. She's got the good handle, and she's able to do it for longer periods of time. It works for sleeping. It works for vacuuming. It works for a lot of other things, um, but that's an example of the technique change. Your raised bed, just bringing the guard to you. Yeah. And if you don't have the ability to do such a big thing, you can have a table with much smaller um, pots for herb gardens or, or such that you can uh, do for fairly cheaply. Yeah, and I think lightness too. Absolutely. There's, there's your forearm support so that you're not, you can use your grip in a bit of a different way. Yep, loosen your grip a bit. Mm -hmm. Same Enough. idea, yeah. Yeah. So again, we've got that ergonomic position for one, but also the wider grip. So you want to look for things that have that uh, wider grip. And lighter. And I think these are all available through Lee Valley. Cool. Look at that posture. That's fantastic. She's working her neck. <laughs> she is. I think she's doing some deep neck flexors, which are excellent for posture. <laughs> and isn't that a beautiful handle on that shovel to allow for, for uh, that double grip? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Design's getting so much better. People love these kneeling stools. Yeah, and if you're moving more, the kneeling pads, although I, have you found a good pad for kneeling? I don't have an excellent one that I've found. You, usually people like the ones that are on wheels and they can kind of scoot themselves mm -hmm. around a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm not sure if that is, it looks like it's a longer handled garden uh, hoe, stencil, hoe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So look and that, those. that little handle to get yourself up, I think, is essential too. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's excellent. Yeah. More the same. Just for, or, I, and maybe bringing the garden to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So again, you want to find a time to garden when your pain's the best and, and when you're at your best. Um, so the thing about gardening that's really hard. I don't know about you, Linda, or the other OTs out there, but I always hear people, oh, I did so much. I gardened for like five hours. It was great. Mm -hmm. And their plan was stay 45 minutes. Unfortunately, they are down then for, well, you know, weeks. Well, when did you next garden? Well, it was, yeah, like 10 days. But I gardened for five hours. Yeah. And it's so hard because when you have a good day, you want to catch up with all the to-do lists for that day, but all the other days before when they weren't good days. So it's totally understandable to want to garden that long. Mm -hmm. But try really to stick to what your plan is so then you can then do that every day. But it's so against human nature to do that. Um, again, sorry? I was just going to say one woman said that her pets keeps her in line because she's learned that if she can move one, she wants to do, move a rock pile for some reason, but if she can move one stone a day and her dogs want to go back inside and, and then she's amazed at her progress. But she was another one that wanted to move the whole rock pile at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other thing too, especially with gardening, gardening can get you into really awkward positions and or static positions or both combined. So make sure that you're taking those micro breaks to change your position, get that posture back, and then get engaged again. Leisure, please do more of this. This is one of the first things. We saw the active leisure was the first thing that people lose with pain. And it's understandable. It's it's too much energy or effort or pain associated with it, and we want to reduce the pain, so we do less. And we tend to drop the things like leisure activities um, that uh, that are going to. We hear that time and time again, hey, Linda? Yes, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And then mood goes down, yeah, and you're and not in that contact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So here's that same slide again, but think about how you can make your leisure activities easier. Can you change your technique? And again, we're looking at time. Can you shorten your time, shorten your effort, shorten uh, how what, what you look like when you do it? Uh, can you change your posture? Can you use aids? 
So hopefully we're getting in suggestions for people. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what leisure looks like. So the active leisure, as we asked before, that's any type of thing that you do, uh, that you choose to do or want to do, um, and it, it involves spending a lot of energy, the physical energy or mental energy. Um, so so the, that's what we would consider sort of an active leisure type of thing. And unfortunately, when you lose this type of leisure, you also lose your ability. We become more deconditioned because we're doing less. Our body isn't as fit, uh, and then it gets harder to do the things we need to do during the day, whether that's work or taking care of children or taking care of ourselves. Uh, we, we get less able to do that because we're less fit. So it's really important for on multiple levels to keep that um, active leisure component going. And we've got somebody, Sue, uh, talking about camping. And I think Ooh. that's so, so important uh, that uh, that people get outdoors, get their lumens. And I, the, the special thing about leisure is it does get us to breathe better. It does change our nervous system. It gets the brain firing in unique ways that perhaps when we're going to the gym, we're, we're in our old routines. I've got one client who, who may, may be in the same boat as not too sure whether he can get out and camp on his own, but he takes uh, his mattress out to or an air mattress out to his back porch and sleeps under the stars. So right. it is, yeah, how do I how do I get value and meet that Yeah. Um and that's part of the activity grading, right? If you can't get out camping, do a little bit of it so your body learns to tolerate that and go I had a lady who who just it blows her mind every year, she goes camping and her pain goes down, way down. And it makes sense. You're out. You're enjoying. You're in the you're in the out, outdoors. It's better environment. You don't. You have less um, requirements of you uh, through the day. Basically, you get up and dress and enjoy the outdoors. So, um, yeah, it's a it's a definite thing that we want people to continue with for sure. How to make it possible? And the same client says uh, I, that reading. And I I know lots of our people have done this. Has found that Kobo Mini. You don't have to turn the pages or any kind of e-reader. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to be light and uh, keep that reading at your pace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We also sure. had a comment from um, from one of the attendees here that they'd like to get back to golf and holding friends' babies. Any advice on uh, on golfing and holding children? Mm. It's um it's a tough one, and it, that um. It depends almost where their pain is. I'm trying to think of if you can't hold babies, I'm assuming it's upper body. The golf is a tough one because um, mm -hmm. it's got so much twisting and bending uh, for the low back. So if it's a low back pain kind of thing, um, that's going to be a really tough one. If you wanted to get back to it, you can always go to the golf course and start with the putting. That's much less um, movement and range. Again, rethink uh, your technique. Can you go and do some uh, spend your time putting as opposed to spending your time um, um, doing the golfing. So holding the kids that, again, I'm, I'm, I'm <sighs> seated. So we always say seated, sit down, mm -hmm. let, the kids come. Let, the kids, let the kids come to you if you can. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's a big one. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a tough one, and it depends if, if, it's, if it's muscle weakness or not. Uh, if it's babies, um, you can also use the um, breastfeeding pillows, those ones that curve, and you can put that around. You put the baby on there and have your arms around it so it doesn't fall off. So you're holding it nice and close like you would, but your arms are doing much less of the work. Um, so that could be helpful for if it's if it's smaller. And like Linda said, if they're older, um, have them have you sit down, have them climb um, um, to you. And then there's all of the general rules. If you go have to bend down to pick them up, you want to use your legs. Keep your back in good posture. Use your legs to bend down. Have, which is a lovely thing, have the child close to you. You want to keep any weight close to you, whether it's a, a block of wood or a child. Keep that nice and close to you, and then use your legs to help you uh, stand up. So uh, that's a thing. And awesome. Yeah. I was just going to say we've got a lifting and bending over, and I think you were just addressing that a little bit. And a lot of, of our people find golfers pick up uh, where you use your body as a pendulum mm -hmm. uh, to be one of the most helpful ways to get down to the floor for light items. Um, yeah. And there's lots of good yoga techniques for lifting and bending and bending those knees. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, Sue, if you want to demonstrate. Do I want to demonstrate? <laughs> Yeah, I will at about 10 after 12. I'll get oh, the... Uh... <laughs> Somebody asked me 
about using a kneeling stool if they have bad knees. Um, I have bad knees, and I, I find my tolerance changes quite a bit, whether some days I can kneel and some days I can't. So I always just try it out. It doesn't seem to have any long-term effect on my arthritic knees, and sometimes it does some good. And if you not, not that multitasking is an excellent thing to do, but if yeah. you can have a kneeling task and a standing task uh, um, at the same time, then you can alternate between the two, um, mm -hmm. so you don't spend too much time in one position. Yeah, we'll keep going know. with the uh, the bits here to get through the slides. So I'm loving the questions, and I'm hoping at the time at the end we can have some more more chats. I, I love that uh, stuff. So passive again, passive leisure is excellent. Uh, it, it, although it involves spending little energy, it can be very relaxing. Um, and, uh, and therapeutic, um, but we do want to um, encourage uh, getting back to some more active stuff. We talked about the the uh, ability to read a little bit, also using um, uh, book stands, uh, which I believe we do have uh, uh, coming up, then we can we'll take a look at that. Please do set leisure as a priority. It's something to look forward to. When we have a task that we're learning or something we love to do, for me, it's playing the piano every night. I'm not excellent at it, <laughs> but I enjoy learning a new song. I enjoy, um, I won't, don't want to say mastering a new song because that sounds like I get good at it, but I enjoy being able to get through the whole song. Um, so it's something I look forward to every day. So wouldn't it be great to get up and have something you look forward to doing? It's a really critical part for our, our mental health uh, and our physical being. Make sure you have rest breaks before, during, and after. Rest before you do something so you have the energy and the ability to get through it. Rest during, posture breaks, whatever you need. Check your breath, check your muscle, whether they're tight or not, and then rest afterwards um, to, to allow your nervous system to handle the activity that you're doing. Again, planning, know your pain. Oh, sorry, Linda. Sorry, I just want to say about that piano playing. We, we always say in our sleep program that that kind of active brain learning puts stress on the brain, which uh, therefore eases our sleep at night. That if we spend a day watching TV, uh, we're, we, we aren't mentally tired. So we know we're changing our nervous system when you're learning new tasks. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah good, good point. Thanks. Again, planning, know your pain and plan the activity accordingly. Uh, if it's an active thing, if it's a very active thing that you can do on occasion, you want to make sure that that day and perhaps the day or two before, you're not um, doing as many of the heavy household tasks. You want to really look at the week and what that looks like and plan not just your chores, but your leisure so you can manage uh, everything and, and get it all fit in. Again, always looking at the posture, making sure you can have that good posture, and the pacing, again, starting at that 50% uh, to, to have success and then to move forward. So here we have that book stand, which you can get if you have a recipe uh, stand as well. That can often be fit for, for books. Or, or even just a really a very heavy book, like a real thick dictionary that you open up and put your book in front of it. Depending on how well the pages stay open, that can be helpful too. So different ways to help with the reading, and as, uh, as um, Linda also mentioned, the electronic readers as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this, uh, this, this device for holding playing cards. So um, if that's what's stopping you uh, from getting out and socializing with friends playing cards, hopefully this little, little thing can uh, help hold the cards for you uh, and help with your, your mood and your pain and enjoying your friends. So um, leisure, we want to make it a priority. Uh, again, we know if you're learning new things or just enjoying something that you love to do, it keeps you more forward-looking. And again, it's usually the first thing that's dropped. Um, yet leisure can get you out of that really pain-centered life where pain dictates everything that you do. You can break free from that using leisure as function, increase your endurance, your ability to be physical, um, and ideally some socialization as well. So, Alina, I'm noticing we just have a couple minutes. Do we want to, I think we've just got a little bit left with driving, and then let's get to some of these questions. What do you think? Yeah, good idea. Okay, I'll get you in on the driving. Vehicles, we still have another section. All right, well, it's very short. Roller trip. There's our favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. I not at Michael's side, but that's leisure and vehicles combined, and it's really good for pacing. Uh -huh. You can move around. Yeah, you got socialization, you've got, I mean, you know, you can go camping in this. We should try go camping like this. <laughs> I think that's the, bus. <laughs> that's the bus I'm going to get to go to Tofino, I think. <laughs> Perfect. 
Uh, vehicles come with so many options now. So if you're looking at a new vehicle, you've, you really can uh, customize it. Uh, think about the four doors as opposed to two because two gets uh, really heavy. Seating, I think, is obvious except for perhaps uh, trying to have a bit of a vinyl surface so we can slide our butts across the seat is a whole lot easier than struggling against fabric. Uh, and some of the newer cars have that lumbar pump so you can pump it up or down. So take a look for that. And the tilt. Um, and, and have a look at your trunk and your storage when you're looking at vehicles and trying to make that as easy as possible for you, yourself. Right. Yeah. That is that. Ha so uh, that handy dandy device called the handy bar, uh, that I believe is a Canadian and maybe even BC invention, and uh, it's very funny because uh, Kathy said that she wanted to buy. She was just <laughs> demonstrating for me, and now she's decided that she's she's purchasing one of those things to put in her glove box and have that extra support. It's just like an armrest for a car. It is a fantastic little tool, for, and I like that you also have the window down uh, to yeah. help, and ideally you'll have someone holding the door steady for you uh, for, for more stability. But, yeah, those those little things are just so handy, that handy bar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, where's my clicker? And then that's our last two devices, really, with that, that get difficult is uh, turning the key, and so enlarging that key fob and making that steering wheel cover uh, soft and enlarged. Mm -hmm. Same principles as everything, all the other devices. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got some stuff here on the side. Uh, this is where I guess if it was live, we'd ask if there's any questions. So I guess through a webinar, we're asking if there's any questions. Uh, we have any lifting and bending tips. Um, again, we sort of just covered that, but uh, do, um, and you probably already asked, uh, do use your big muscles. Uh, do make sure you have that good posture. Use your legs uh, for powering up and lowering yourself slowly and controlled down. Uh, keep loads close to you. Keep, uh, when you're looking at carrying something, make sure that you have your shoulders and your hips in the same plane, especially if you have low back pain. Instead of twisting, you want to use your feet again. Just like with the rake, you want to get in that good position, hold the load close, and then use your feet. Here's my feet. Use your feet. Where are they? To turn as opposed to to um, uh, to twisting uh, the, the body, especially if it's a heavier load. And then don't forget Michael's tips on neck and shoulder blades too, because it really is awareness of the body as a whole. Oh Absolutely. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So I got a question about where can where can they get a a car bar, and I'm thinking that Canadian Tire might have something like that. Absolutely, absolutely. They are all over the place. There's a couple of uh, companies that are putting them out right now. But yeah, Canadian Tire, Handy Bar. Yeah. All right, well, but we're just about uh, done with our time here. So I wanted to um, thank you so much, Sue and Linda, for being with us again and for sharing all these amazing tips. It was a great session. And I want to thank all of our attendees for uh, joining us over these last uh, few weeks. And um, I want to make sure that you don't forget to please fill out the survey that will pop up on your screen as soon as we end to help us improve our programming. Also, you should re remember that this uh, webinar is for informational purposes only and it's not meant to be medical advice and that you shouldn't um, begin, cease, or change any treatment that you're currently doing without first speaking to your healthcare uh, practitioner. So with that, I want to thank you again, Lisa, uh, Sue, and Linda, and um, we'll uh, see you again soon on uh, on Pain DC programming. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye.